Hi students, welcome to Labrador Park. So today I'm going to share with you some uses of mangroves. So as you have already learned in class, we use mangroves for charcoal. Why? Because if you look at the wood here, if you are able to hold it up with your hands, you'll realize that the branch is actually very heavy and the wood is very dense. So what people will do is that they will actually chop off the branches and the roots of the mangroves and they will burn it into fire. So this is how we use mangroves for as charcoal. Alright, hello ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to talk about another use of mangrove which is for medicinal purposes. So behind me right here is the Indian almond plant. So what people usually, how people use this plant as medicine is that they will usually take the leaves and they will dry it and you'll get something like this. So what then do you do with the dried leaves? You make it into, you put it in a bottle of water and you'll get a brown tea as such. So how is this actually used as medicine? Uh, if you keep fish, right, and then you pour this brown water inside your fish tank, it's actually very good for the health of your fish because it is antibacterial. That's number one. So it'll help your fish heal faster, let's say there are injuries or your fish has any sickness. Alright, so uh, another thing about this plant is that uh, it is said that the fruits can actually help you with liver problems or digestive problems if you eat it. Then some parts of the plants, uh, the bark can actually be used for rashes. So you just rub it on your skin and if you have any rash, it will actually uh, help you with this. So this is just one example of how a plant in a mangrove can actually help uh, with uh, producing medicine for people and that's one human use. So I'll see you guys in the next one for the uh, sources of food. Let's go! Okay, so now we're going to talk about mangroves as sources of food. So, uh, as you can see around me, this habitat may actually contain a lot of different things that you can use as food. So we'll talk about flora first, meaning your plants. Right? So one thing that you can use for food in mangroves is this thing called your mangrove apple. So the mangrove apple actually grows on trees. And how do people actually use it for cooking or for food? Uh, when you use the ripe mangrove apple, meaning the mangrove apple that's already uh, cooked, right? Or what people usually say. It actually helps make your dishes more sour. So for example, you're cooking something sour like uh, any Korean dishes that you see on mukbang, right? So you can actually use this to make your dish even more sour. So some people decide uh, that they rather eat it raw, meaning they cut it up like an apple, and then you eat it with a dipping sauce. So that is how uh, plants in a mangrove can be used as a source of food. Alright, so my next question to you is, have you eaten this dish before? Alright, so uh, it seems, I'm certain that you may have seen this, or you may have tried it for yourself. So usually, what fish do we use to actually cook this dish? So this is uh, actually called uh, lemon steamed fish. Lemon steamed fish. So usually in order for us to make this dish, we will use this fish right here. It's called a barramundi, or also known as a sea bass. Alright, so a sea bass uh, can actually be found in your mangroves right here. So if you take a look at this habitat, right? Your sea bass actually loves to swim around this area. Why do they love to swim around this area? It's because the roots provide them with protection from their predators. Okay, so next up people, I am sure as a true blue Singaporean, you should have seen this dish before, which is your chili crab, right? So chili crab can also, uh, mud crabs, which are used for chili crabs, can also be used for, uh, can also be found actually in mangroves. And it is your lucky day because we happen to have a mud crab right here that can be used to cook chili crab. So I was, just want you to, I'm not going to take it out because it is a very fierce looking animal. Uh, but this can be found in your mangroves and they can be caught using traps such as those. Okay? Alright, so just to wrap up ladies and gentlemen, uh, for this part of the video, we were talking as ma we were talking about mangroves as a source of food. All right, so we will then be looking at uh, the other uses of mangroves in the other parts of the video. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Bye bye. Hi everyone, welcome back. So the second use that we're going to talk about is uh, how mangroves can actually protect the coast from coastal erosion. So now I just want you to take a look at the water over here. Okay, so as you take a look at the water, you realize that it is very calm. So now, take maybe a few seconds to think about why the water is so calm. Okay, so as you look around the mangrove, right, you realize that there are a lot of roots that are located near the coast. So what these roots will do is that they will actually protect the coast from erosion. How? So these roots will actually help to slow down the waves. Okay, so as they slow down the waves, the waves have less energy to erode particles away from the coast. So this is how coastal erosion can be reduced using mangroves.
Alright, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome back again. So we're going to be exploring another use of mangrove, another natural use of mangrove, which is that they are a habitat for uh, your different animals. So as you can see behind me, as you can see behind me, the vegetation is very, very lush. Okay, so this provides your animals with a lot of places to actually hide uh, from different predators. Okay, so if you also take a look at this system over here, come here, come here, let's come take a look at the roots over here. They actually provide a very, very good place for small fish to hide from larger predators. Not only do large fish, are large fish unable to enter these areas, uh, so, that, so then this provides protection for these young fish. Okay, now I'm going to give you a case study uh, right here about this fish called the Goliath grouper. Okay, so as you can see from this picture right here, this fish is absolutely humongous, almost the size of this man right here. Alright, so let's, uh, I want you to think, do you think that such a huge fish like this can be found in your mangroves? Alright, so the answer is not really so because the mangroves are usually shallow and this fish will not be able to swim into your mangroves. However, how does uh, this fish use mangroves? So, I'm going to show you here the life cycle of your Goliath grouper, which is this fish over here. So basically, your adult Goliath grouper will release their eggs into the sea. And then the waves will carry the eggs all the way to the mangroves. And it will hatch at the mangroves. So for the first six weeks of your uh, Goliath grouper's life, right, they're going to be spending in a mangrove to get bigger, to get even fatter. Once they get big enough to actually go out on their own, they will go to their coral reefs, and when they get even bigger, they will swim even further out and then you will get your Goliath grouper right here. So this is just an image for you to see right here. These are the root system that actually allows your Goliath grouper to actually hide and grow big uh, before it goes out to the open seas. Okay, so your mangroves are not only a habitat for a large number of flora and fauna, but in actual fact, they also function like a nursery where your uh, fish can actually grow uh, in order to reach its full size. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Remember to replay the video if you don't understand anything and don't rush through the videos. Alright, keep jogging on.